Should, would, could. You may know the grammar rules, but do you know how to use them when you talk? Understanding how we use should, would, and could in the real world is essential if you are to speak with these words fluently. And that's what this video is about. This is not a grammar rules video. This video teaches you some of the most important reasons why we use should, would, and could. The situations when, if they come about, in your mind you should think, this is my moment to use these words. Word number one, reasons for use with conditionals. The first is when giving advice. Look at the example with the bank. If I were you, I would ask your bank for help. And this is so common in spoken English, where we use this second conditional form, if I were you, to give advice. Instead of saying should, instead of saying you should ask your bank for help, we say, if I were you, I would ask your bank for help. It's a way of giving advice with a little bit of distance by making it I and being hypothetical. I'm imagining that I am you. This is what I would do in that situation. And we do this in English all the time. Rather than using should for advice, we make it a little bit more distant and polite by using would in a second conditional sentence. The second uh, time where you may use word with conditionals is to do with wishes. If only I had more money, I would travel the world. If you're wishing for something, it's quite natural to use would to describe the thing that you want to do. And then conditionals can be used with would for giving reasons why or giving reasons why not. For example, if you had a good credit rating, I would give you a loan. This is indicating a reason why not. Probably before this sentence, a person has said, I'm not going to give you a loan. And now they need to explain why. If you had a good credit rating, I would give you a loan. So it's using a conditional to perhaps say that this is the unreal situation if the unreal situation was we real, then my decision would be different. Word number two, lack of ability. This is something that's not covered sometimes when we teach about wood, but we often use it with that sense in terms of past, present and future. When we uh, wanted something to be true or we wanted to be able to do something, but it wasn't possible. So first of all, lack of ability in the past. Let's look at these houses. I would have moved away, but my family didn't want me to. So here, would have indicates uh, past time. Uh, would have is often a structure that refers to the past. Not always. It can sometimes refer to the present and the future, but usually it's for the past. Um, so, I would have moved away, but my family didn't want me to. I didn't have the ability to move away because of my family's desire for me to stay. Lack of ability in the present is usually with would be or would with the infinitive of a verb. So, I would be the champion, but my main competitor has improved. So, I can't be the champion at the moment. And this is why I have a competitor who is now better than me. I would be going to the carnival, but I have to deal with a problem at home. This problem stopped me. I have to deal with a problem at home, and that made a lack of ability for me to achieve what I wanted to. Would for politeness. Here's another common reason why we use would in a real life situation, and that's for politeness. And there are different types of politeness. We have offers and requests, and there are then there are responses to offers and requests as well. So first of all, a request. Would you like to join me at the lunch tomorrow? Here I'm using the lunch to refer to a specific lunch that I'm attending, not just lunch in general. So this is like an official, perhaps, business lunch. And then the response, 
I would be delighted to accept your invitation to the lunch. So this use of would simply makes it more polite, again, because of this unreal aspect to would, uh, removing it from reality a bit, which when we remove it uh, would, when we remove what we're saying from reality, it makes it easier to hear, easier for the person to reject, and it just all becomes more polite. Should number one, advice with intensification. Have a look at the following. First of all, this lady whose hair has gone a bit wrong. What would you say to her? Maybe you really should have a haircut. It's better than just saying you should have a haircut. You really should have a haircut means I'm giving you very clear advice here. My advice to you is strong. Now look at the next one. You definitely should take a rest. So here definitely again gives extra strength to the should. We can also use adverbs of frequency. You should always check you've turned the tap off before leaving the house. So the always adds a bit of intensification in terms of the frequency here. Notice these intensifier words normally make the intensification greater. Should number two, stating what you expect when it might not turn out that way. I don't know why they are late, they should be here by now. So here should be introduces what I expect. Maybe someone's asked you, why are they not here? And you need to give a reason where you're saying, well, I expected them to be here, but I accept it's true that they're not. Should is excellent for communicating this. So when something doesn't seem right, should be is helpful. And also when accepting the possibility of a mistake. That should be enough to cover the cost of the meal, but let me know if you need more. So you'll expect the money to be enough, but there's some possibility that you've got it wrong. Basically, you're saying, I'm doing it correctly to the best of my knowledge. I can't promise I haven't made a mistake, but it's the best according to what I know. And that's where should is helpful. Should number three, a softer way of saying must. Here's a third reason why we use should, and it's often a softer way of saying must. I think you should go now is softer than saying you must go now. Should gives that strong impression that something is necessary without putting a rule on some, someone. It makes it feel to them like they've got room to disagree, even when you're suggesting really strongly that they don't. Really, we're communicating the same as mustn't. But it's just a bit softer when you say should because it doesn't have that grammatical meaning of being an obligation. Now we look at can and could together. One, different types of possibility. Here are some uh, common reasons why we use can or could for possibilities. Theoretical use, when giving options, suggestions and when there is a common possibility, something common to a lot of things. So let's first of all look at the example of theoretical possibility. Look at the fire. A fire can be made from rubbing sticks, but it's hard. So here it's a theoretical possibility. In theory, according to science, if you rub sticks together, eventually you might start a fire. So it's a theoretical possibility. Now, most people, when they try this, don't succeed, but it might be possible. So can here introduce a possibility that's just theoretical. Let's look at the next one, and that is options. When you have different options, you can go to the morning service or you could visit the evening one instead. So here the possibility is in different options. Perhaps someone says to you, um, what should we do today? Well, you can do this, or you could do that, or you could do that. So here you're giving a list of possibilities as options that someone can then take you up on. The next one is suggestions. You could try calling customer services to resolve the issue. So here perhaps someone's been on the phone, they're trying to resolve a problem they have, or maybe they've been on emails trying to resolve the problem and they can't solve the problem just through emails. 
and the next step is call someone. So you could try. I'm suggesting this as a possibility. And then the last one, going on a roller coaster can be quite scary. And here can is a possibility which is just general and would exist in every time you face this situation. So every time you face the situation of a roller coaster, this will be possible. So we can use can for that. Can and could number two. Different uses for ability. What particular ways might we, might we use these words when speaking about ability? Uh, two aspects I'm going to pick on here. There's, there are more than these, but these are two of the main situations where you may want to use can or could to speak about ability. So the first one is just general ability, which we've already covered in the lessons. For example, I can balance a ball on my head. In general, this is something I can do. Uh, but we also often use ability uh, when it's linked with the condition of something. So let's look at the next one. You could balance a ball on your head if you practiced enough. So here there is ability, but the ability has a condition that's attached to it. Can and could number three, asking for help. We use can and could for both requests and offers. Uh, when it's linked to uh, the topic of help. So could you move a little to the left? I can't see. So could you move is the request for help. And I can help you find a better seat. This is the offer of help. So could and can can be used in those ways.